dum, teddy dum, teddy da 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 The story I'm about to tell you is not a fairy tale. Even if it talks of werewolves, the devil, and much worse still. It happened to me and my two brothers in that forsaken month of December 1858, near the village of Wolvesvale in Lower Canada. Oh, come on, it's per Oh, hey, everyone, and welcome aboard. I'll be your Captain Hillian today, along with... Peace of mind, you Captain and Trick here at your service. And, yeah, OBS got an update, so things are a bit glitchy. Like, for one, there's a bit showing underneath here that's not supposed to. So give me a moment as I try to fix that. I'll have to... I'll have to... Uh, <laughs> I'll have to remove the... Uh, preview screen from always on top so I can actually see OBS behind it to adjust that but I th I thought it had been adjusted uh, before so I don't know why it's showing that now or maybe I've just been m overlooking that constantly since the DX window is a bit lower than normal since it has the uh, the top bar on top that it just doesn't want to move off screen uh, but yeah uh, if <clears throat> welcome everyone to showcase Sunday number 100 and <laughs> And 11 so that's 111 now and uh yeah <laughs> we've been going with this for quite a time huh uh let's see edit transform yeah. and i don't uh, yeah, again, I really was here at the start of this uh thing i don't know when i joined the showcase something part let's see if this does anything or this I, I probably should make a background of this just for the dx window games and I think I can still see a bit at the bottom. I can't really see. Uh, yeah, I, I need to crop this more at the bottom. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, needs to be 360 together or 360 together. Let me see. Is this going? Is this showing anything on the sides? The annoying thing is that the moment I click outside of the game, it. <laughs> It doesn't show on the screen anymore, so I can't check if there's any rogue lines of pixels. So I think we'll have to make do with this. So, yeah, definitely before the next time we have a DX, you know, a, a game that requires DX window to work up. Very obviously at the top of the right line now. I'll need to make a new backdrop to outline those specifically, just to make sure that things don't do stuff like this. Uh, let's see. Two pixels more from the top. And I need to click outside of that first. 
Would be nice if there was a see-through version of the lines around OBS you know, selected things. But yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Does the turn? Yeah. <clears throat> And yeah, welcome come back uh, to showcase Sunday number 111, where we will, well, showcase some games for about half an hour each, shorter if they just prove to be not fun at all. And last week we tried to showcase this game, but... It, uh, ugh, ugh, pardon. <laughs> uh, there, were happy, there were some issues with it, well, for one, not filling in the, the window properly because it had big black bars at the top and bottom, and plus the mouse could get out of the game and, well, when you, I would accidentally click outside of the game, it would reformat its size to a lot smaller. That, however, yeah. has been fixed. Um, I cannot see the game at the moment. Uh, right, give me a sec. I forgot to put this one always on top again. Oh yeah. This first game there is Sam Freud's Tales of Werewolves, Tome 1. Um, I th I'm not sure if they ever managed to actually get started on a Tome 2, because this, well, honestly, this game is a bit obscure, but it is still pretty nice. And yeah, we can, yeah, we can choose between two characters. We have Jack here, and then we have Joss over here. Let's let's give them both a read of their description. <clears throat> Let's see. Jack Tikna Jack O'Carroll. Difficulty high. Jack suits strategic players that favor cunning and traps to survive. As soon as he learned to walk, Jack started following his father, the Irish adventurer Bowen O'Carroll, to go hunting and trapping. Later, his passion for complicated traps got him interested in new technologies such as steam engines and explosives, and he conducted many ingenious experiments. In 1837, he took up arms for the <clears throat> Patriotes and fought for you know, the, the democracy and responsible government in Lower Canada. However, after wounding his face in the Battle of St. Charles, he had to take refuge and live as a hermit in an isolated cabin in the forest near the village of Wolfsvale. So yeah, this is his place that we're in. <clears throat> and probably said something's wrong here, since some things in... Yeah, I believe some things in Canada have more French naming than anything. Uh, they have many French and native, uh, yeah, native uh, Canadian. Yeah, yeah because I think I said <laughs> I think I said Patriot is more like it was uh, Spanish. Me and <laughs> yeah, I was wondering why you pronounce it like that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Joseph Tijos O'Carroll, difficulty normal. Joss excels both in making, both in close combat and with traps. Joss was a sickly child and almost died after he, after a bad fall from a tree. But his mother, a famous Inuwe, Inu witch, used her magic spells so effectively to heal him that he grew up with an iron constitution and extraordinary strength. Enticed by the high pay they offered him, Josh took a job as a lumberjack at the W. Hood Company at a very young age. After the forced exile of his brother Jack, who was wanted by the authorities for his role in the Patriote Rebellions of 1837, Josh bought a little property in the village of Wolvesvale where he lives with his, with his sister Josephine. And yeah, let's go with him. Their dialogue does differ a bit between the characters as you go. But not too much, I believe. And yeah, let's just put in a name. <clears throat> and yeah, these are the levels you'll have to well, survive through because this game is a bit different than what you typically expect of its genre. Because it's sort of like a tower defense game, only it's more like traps and it's not <laughs> as linear with how things move as in other games like uh, Sanctum. <clears throat> All right. Uh, wolf. <clears throat> For some time now, many villagers in Wolvesville have noticed a lot of strange behavior coming from the wolves in the forest, acting more aggressive than usual. There are even rumors that they've been possessed by the devil. We're going to have traps. Okay. Let's start and start the timer. Chapter 1, Excel and reun the Reunion. As I live and breathe, if it isn't my little sister, Josephine, what good wind blows you to the deepest, darkest forest to see your hermit brother? More like a storm, I'm afraid. The parish priest went crazy and jumped me like a demon when I was dusting the sacristy. I tried to fend him off with a candelabra, but a candle fell on the floor and the church caught fire. Ever since, 
The whole parish of Woolsvale says it's my fault. That's just crazy. Doesn't make any sense at all. But hey, don't just stand there like you're holding up the doorpost. The thing is, you see, Jacques, I'm not alone. Don't worry. It wasn't my idea to come here, brother. Without Joseph to protect me, the villagers would have torn me to pieces in the village square. He can't live there anymore either. Please, Jacques, for the love of our mother, let bygones be bygones and let us both stay here with you. Did you hear that? Sounds like a Wolverine's outside spooking our horses. Since you're going to be living off me, Josie, might as well make yourself useful and chase it away, will ya? Meanwhile, I'll heat up some tea for our sister. You best take good care of her. She's got a fever. Okay, it, it isn't the highest quality, but I still find I still find it really charming. Like you can yeah, see like, them just change expressions between things as they go. Yeah, the animation is just fine, and the intro animation and the voice actor was also very fine and good. Just these three voice actors, but actually, I recognize all three. Okay, I'll have to look them up then. Oh, damn, the horses are dead. And your Wolverine looks a lot more like a wolf, Jackie boy. The pack must be close by. I think the, all these three are rather... Mm, one of those that are very hit and miss, like, sometimes when they are on voice acting, they do rather well. And are actually properly instructed. But I, I have also seen them in many... Where they would act, act in things you may expect to see from Saber Spark and such. <laughs> yeah. You know, those bad uh, cartoons and animations. The bridge to the village is burning. Looks like I'm going to be staying with Jack longer than expected. Yeah, voice acting. The, the, the quality of voice work in the games Combat. is in stuff is not just from a uh, voice your actor but also is direction represented by the red bar at the bottom of the screen while your stamina is represented by the green bar you use stamina for each attack you make if you run out of stamina then your attacks are slow and weak you accumulate rage for each attack you land on an enemy the fire on the hud and on your axe indicates that you have some rage built up. Right click to unleash all your rage. And yeah, to this is also enemy attacks. You can press the space bar to perform a dodge roll. Okay, there's also something I can praise this game about. It has really good you know, tutorials that aren't really holding your hand and just telling things. Uh, yeah, just in a good way. Yeah, <laughs> double I, kill. <laughs> this is what I play uh, voice acting, and uh, yeah, really, it's, there's a good tutorial. Like, there's a good voice acting too, as well. Yeah, uh, continuing what I was saying earlier, uh, if a good voice actor is handed a terrible script, then that's still not going. <laughs> that's still going to come out terrible. It's just going to have be with a good voice. <laughs> Okay. Shift is your Wait. typical sprint button here. The rifle. To reload your rifle, hold down the control key. To reload faster, click the right mouse button repeatedly. This icon appears when your rifle is loaded. Your crosshair will be red if you have no target, or if your target is out of range. It will be yellow if you're auto-locked onto an enemy. If you aim carefully for the head, the crosshair will turn green, and you can make a headshot, causing maximum damage. Left click to fire. I recognize the that amount voice of ammo actually. you have remaining is shown at the bottom left of the screen. 
I, re I feel like I re heard that voice in both games and uh, animations and of course cartoons, but also in instruction uh, videos or something like that. Okay, people paying attention will also notice some numbers next to the hut there. That'll come into play later. Okay, you can come out now. <laughs> sent you. Without your help, I would have been devoured like a rabbit. Hard to miss you, Miller. I think they heard you all the way in Quebec City. Be careful. There's a pack of rabid wolves around here. How many? Dozens. Hundreds, maybe. They even blocked the road to my mill in the east. Go see by yourself if you want. As for me, I'm gonna run and hole up at the W. Hood Company. Okay, maybe it's not for everyone, but I'm getting the I'm getting directional audio from this in my headsets. Like if they're on the left, I hear them on the left. If I they're on the right, I hear them on the right. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure how to? This game is mechanically more than competent, I would say, and that make that elevates it higher than uh, you would expect from a game that <laughs> looks like this. <laughs> When you're in combat, the fear factor meter appears at the bottom of the screen. This meter represents the time you have before your enemy's next attack. The more your enemies fear you, the greater the distance between both icons and the more time you have before the next attack. However, enemies aren't as afraid of you with each passing second, in which case the icons start to get closer. When your enemy's fear factor is equal to yours, the icons touch and your enemies attack. If you're running low on stamina, it's better to keep your distance and let it recharge. Be careful though, even if you have a higher fear factor, enemies will still attack you if you're too close. Yep. Okay, let's reload this thing. Because even though we are playing on normal difficulty, it doesn't mean that the game is going to be a cakewalk. A bit closer. The, the gun does stay loaded if you uh, have already put a round in. You don't need to reload it on every time you try to aim. There we go. It does give it a good attention to detail, let's say. Okay. And there. And now the last one. Okay, the paw mark shows which one is going to attack next, which the tutorials are probably going to say in about a few seconds. Yeah, the tutorials are really well done to explain everything about this game. The biggest gripe I know that people have about it is that one of the traps is glitched. Uh. Pack management. When you attack multiple enemies at the same time, your chances for survival oh. drop. So it's important to know how to intimidate your enemies to space out their attacks. There are two ways to intimidate your enemies. First, every time an enemy takes damage, its fear factor decreases. Second, the icon at the bottom of the screen is one of your special abilities, the intimidating shout. Press the Q key to shout and intimidate your enemies. Ah! Don't forget, the distance between the two icons is how long you have before the next attack. Take this time to reload your gun and let your stamina recharge. Lastly, the paw symbol over an enemy's head means it's next to attack. Always pay attention to them. I think confidence might actually be a better description than fear factor, but still. Yeah, I think you should remember something about the voice actors. I feel like I recognize. Two of them that are going to attack. I, I, I could be wrong here. I would say right, this right away. I could be wrong here. But I think if, if, if the other was a think of, if my memory is telling me correct, is it possible it might be wrong? I might be wrong here, but I think those boys are not native English speakers. That 
That's my brother. I turned my back for two seconds and he's in hot water. I'd better get back to the cabin as quick as I can. Oh. <laughs> okay, I I thought I saw the, the third wolf vanish for a second. Yep. To the right of the screen, you'll find the status icons of your buildings. Wolves and other creatures can damage your buildings. If they manage to destroy one, he will fail the night. So, yeah, that's where the defense part of this all comes in. Drink the Canadian oh, whiskey in your pack by pressing 1. The Canadian whiskey enrages you, allowing you to do special attacks. And, yeah, it won't let us move what? until we do that. So, yeah, <laughs> Joseph is a belligerent drunk. Get lost, you. Oops, still got it there. Okay. Okay, that thing is really aggressive. I was, okay. I, I was saying, I find this stamina system a bit unique, but it kind of makes sense for... Like, if you all get in tired, you can still swing. But it may not be as good as when you're more properly rested. Yeah. But I have to say something similar, but that's more of, if you run out of stamina, you're not able to swing at all. There we go. And yeah, as has become obvious, we get money for every wolf that we kill. We'll get to the, what that's used for later. And because it's the 19th century, it's of course just cents instead of full dollars. They speak to me. I hear them. But especially I... I see. I see the beasts. They were sent by the devil. What happened? I don't know. She started shaking like a crazy person. Then she let out an awful scream and fell to the ground. Damn it, I asked you to watch her. There was nothing I could do. Go get Dr. Lamontang. I don't know what happened, but the bridge to Wolf's Veil was burnt down. We'll have to wait till morning. Werewolf. When the soul of a human is, corrupt by, uh, is corrupted by the devil, it can escape its body at nightfall to go werewolf. The soul can then locate a wolf or dog and possess it. Soon after, the animal grows to monstrous size and acquires distorted features along with greatly increased strength. Retaining part of its human intellect, the werewolf is a cunning and relentless predator that often leads large packs of wolves. Uh, very resistant to all personal weapons except those that are blessed. Yeah, I have to say, this game was the first time that I heard about a type of werewolf where it's actually a soul possessing a wolf. Typically, when you think werewolf, it's a man turned to wolf, not like some yeah. uh, <laughs> remote work <laughs> possession uh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah, first time I heard of... Yeah, I never heard of that uh, until now. Chapter 2, Desires and Regrets. My lord, forgive me. I was overcome with desire. What have I done? What have I done? You're only a man, LCR. Who's there? Who are you? But you just now invited me. When you tried to attack your servant Josephine after she'd refused your advances, I thought we had some affinities. But when you let the fire spread in your church after Josephine hit you with the candelabra, when you accuse her in front of all the villagers of the crime that you had in fact committed, that was when I knew we were going to do great things together. <laughs> and that is what brings me here to make an offer you can't possibly refuse concerning your lovely and inaccessible servant. Yeah, someone's in trouble. Okay, yet I recognize the voice actors, but more and more I hear them, so the more I wonder if they are on from the more. Oh, I, I kind of hate myself to say this, but. Budget actors? Does that make sense? It uh, makes sense, yeah. <clears throat> Some people are not just. There's nothing wrong with being. Uh, well, 
if you're being paid less than you're worth, then that's a problem. But it's it's no news. There should be no issue in being a quote unquote lower tier yeah, voice actor. Like not everyone can afford Steve Blum and such. So it's always nice to have people who are more available, I think, or more easily available, I'd say would be a better word. Yeah. Provided you get a proper instructions, of course. Yeah. So anyway, you're reading them here it does kind of feel a bit weird. <laughs> Anyways, this is the second half of the gameplay that will be uh, that this game has to offer. Let's see. Here is strategy mode. In this mode, you're able to place traps in the forest to strategically plan your defense for the coming night. Let's see, I see them. The beasts want to carry me back to their master, and they will attack the knight. They even feel the presence of a werewolf. Omens. The omen cards represent Josephine's visions, and they help you plan your defense for the coming night. This shows the type of enemy that will attack. Leaving your cursor over a card will show you a lot of information about that enemy type. This is the number of enemies that will attack from this area. The attacking order of the omen cards depends on what wave they belong to. During the night, a new wave will not attack until the previous wave has been defeated. You can choose which waves you see on the map with the filters on the right side of the screen. The last icon on the card represents what their target is for the night, in this case, it's your house. If you click on a card, you'll see the enemy's path to their target. Plan your strategy with the help of these omen cards. Yeah, th this game, I'm, I'm pretty sure this game doesn't leave a single zone unturned or unexplained. Let's see. Now I know where the beasts are going to attack from. I'll set up wolf traps to help me tonight. And yeah. Here comes the wolf and the trapping parts. Yeah, click on the wolf trap to select it. Then we just put some down where it wants us to. Hmm. The tutorial movie for the wolf trap is now available. Yes, let's do that. The wolf trap. You can walk over your wolf trap without worry. You won't set it off. A wolf trap will automatically activate when an enemy walks over it. Yep, and on most, it should be an instant kill. They'll also try to lure other beasts on their hanging nets. Let's put one up around here. This needs to be near trees. They also say that right here. Characteristics must be hung from nearby trees, triggered by shooting with a rifle. So there, and another one there. The hanging net. The number above the net represents the amount of enemies underneath your trap. All you have to do is aim and shoot the net to bring it down on your enemies. Okay, gotta love it when tutorials are done good, huh? Short, to the points, concise. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I, fin I finally finished setting my traps and just need to wait for nightfall. I don't... What the heck? Hmm? I don't... It, it, there's some, I hear a weird bird or something from the game outside at the moment. Yeah, it's in the game. Oh, right! <laughs> so yeah, they do ambient sound good as well. A little bit too good. But yeah, I was to say earlier before that I'm some interrupting is... Would you describe this game as a... Diamond in the rough? Yeah. Okay, let's gotta wait for the wolves to spawn and get themselves killed. I mean, a gemstone in a rough, I guess, in this case. Oh. Let's finish you off. There we go. And yeah, people, uh, you can. Yeah. People paying attention will notice that the, the wolves appear as yellow or red dots. 
on the minimap that'll be come to attention i think here detection enemies can see and hear you if an enemy gets too close to you it will see you and attack the circle around your hero on the minimap represents the sound he makes when you move you make more noise an enemy will detect you if its dot on the minimap enters your circle. Certain actions like firing your rifle or shouting create a lot of noise. When an enemy hears you, a marker will appear at your feet. This marker represents the last place an enemy heard you. All enemies that heard you will go to this marker. If the enemy does not see or hear you again, he will leave the area after a short period of time, and the marker disappears. The dashed circle on your mini-map is the range of your shout. Use this ability to lure enemies under your traps. Yep. <laughs> That's going to be of big use with everything. So, lure them over, get out of range. Okay, this thing comes preloaded, and now we just wait. <laughs> like I said, this this game is <laughs> this game is more competently made than some AAA games, I'd say, at least mechanically. Yeah, I'm trying to analyze here the good and part was like mechanically, I think the well, tutorial and the Intro is very good, like high tier indie game style uh, tier. Just the cutscene and the dialogue where they talk with each other. Yeah, that that, that one is a little bit uh... rough. <laughs> yeah. Some lines work and some don't like it doesn't feel organic so to say hmm. like it, it gives me impression of which if i'm watching someone doing a review of one of those very bad cartoons or animations or a very bad i don't know if you call them c movies but i think you get what i mean, mean with that yeah like they tried just it lacks a bit of polish. Well, you think it's a lot, a lot, a lot of polish. But they seem to try to speak to a younger audience, which kind of does not help in this case. And yeah, the game also has levels. <laughs> Grand Wolf. As everyone knows, wolves form strong hierar <clears throat> hierarchical uh, societies, which are led by alpha males. Only the biggest and toughest of these males are able to reach the ripe old age of eight when they become grand wolves. Moves time two times faster than a normal wolf. And I think we put one of those down earlier. Chapter 3, Resentment and Damnation. Action points. It costs action points every time you place a trap. The amount of action points a trap costs to place is shown in the trap info, which appears when leaving your cursor over the icon. Some traps also cost money. To remove a trap, click on the trap removal tool, then select the trap. To remove all your traps, click on the Remove All tool, then Confirm. Traps disappear after one night, except those that cost money, which stay until used. Yep. Okay, and the timer just went off, but let's look at least at this little tutorial movie for the bonfire. Bonfires. To light a bonfire, press E while close by. If you're standing near a lit bonfire, it will significantly increase your fear factor. If you move too far away, you lose the bonus. 
Simple enough. This icon shows how much time is left before the bonfire goes out. So yeah, th those are good for defensive points, where you'll be getting attacked by a lot of uh, wolves. And this is also something. Loggers from the W Hood Co. Have, com have opened up a new path. There are new paths every day. Make sure you take this into consideration when you're placing your traps. So yeah, you can't just be protecting the same choke point every night. Yeah, mm. and I, I, think, I think I can see why they call it a fear factor. You... Or given fear to the wolves. Yeah, I, I guess. For the wolves, animals are usually afraid of fire. Yeah, I, I guess on your end it could be called fear factor. On their end it could be called confidence, I guess. But that's just semantics, I think, at this point. Let's see. If you feel like you need a little help planning your strategy for the coming night, simply click on the strategy hints option in the pause menu. Okay. But yeah, I, I think you can see why I think we'll be streaming this day, uh, this game eventually. Yeah, I am curious. Just the only thing that uh, make it, make me want to see maybe yes is them uh, cutscenes. Uh, let's see. Okay, apparently. Okay, either something in OBS broke or something with the stream deck broke because the commands for swapping between the display characters aren't working. Anyways, let's move on to the second game. <clears throat> and I, I think I just realized that we I forgot to say uh, for possible streaming in the future or not uh, in the little intro we did. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Okay, uh, Borderless Gaming, are you going to move that over or not? It's, uh, just as I bloody click it, uh, though that isn't the size it should be. But there we go, almost. Uh, it's kind of struggling a bit. It worked, it worked with it before, so I don't know why it's being a bit troublesome. Can't be anything on OBS's side. This is really. <clears throat> there we go. Just the game and wordless gaming have a di disagreement. Okay. Uh, yeah, this game uh, is already slowing me down. So let's go to the options. We're not even Wait. in actual gameplay with this. Uh, 41. I didn't know this was still in early access. Can I. Windowed, yes. And there <clears throat> okay uh let's set that to medium for the moment yep, yep. of course it resets this that as well for some reason uh actually let's put it on low just to be absolutely certain okay um now we just have to resize it again or rather tell borderless gaming to make it windowless again so show uh, find it among this somewhere. There we go. Uh, oh, come on out. Sometimes this just happens that something gets doesn't get recognized by the program anymore. So we'll have to remove that quick, and then put it in here again. Uh, there. Okay. First, gotta change it to no size change because for some reason this be doesn't become immediately accessible. Set window size, no, and then 320, 3, 3 There we go. The first two numbers are how many pixels from to the side and down it has to be. And then it's just the uh, the window that it'll actually shape. And still getting slowed down for some reason on the freaking menu of all things. But that's what the numbers mean. Yep. Uh, let's set that to a max of 85 at the moment. Uh, actually, if I if I press that again, it's just going to change the, everything again, I'm pretty sure. So let's not. But yeah, but satisfactory. Be... Uh, what is there really to say about this game that shouldn't already be decently common knowledge? Addicting? Uh, yeah, basically this game is like a 3D factorio. And yeah... This is, some, like, this is a game that you can spend quite a bit of time on, solo or uh, with friends. 
And let's see, it's start game. Uh, uh, and let's hope that it stops slowing me down for some reason. <clears throat> no, I know why I think of you. I was wondering, how did we showcase this? But now we know it's Factorio. There is. Oh, yeah, we showcase Factorio, <laughs> not Satisfactory. Yeah, or Satisfactory. <laughs> Okay, I I do have to say that the name is kind of brilliant since well, satisfaction, satisfaction, and well, factory. <laughs> so, uh, I think how many people usually mix those two games up accidentally? Uh, a bit hard to since they have different styles or visual styles, and but beyond they do. S they do have a similar concept, but beyond that, one is 2D and 3D and looks a lot more grimy as well. I think it's more of the names and theme, uh, not the graphic but just the, when you p talk about it, the people go wonder, wait, which one was which again? <clears throat> so okay, it's taking a bit to load. in the names after all. Uh, uh, oh, come on, it, re it reset the... It reset uh, the resolution oh. again, for some reason. Give me a sec on this to do this again with Borderless Gaming. The following instructional video is a summary and of, of course your pending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Fixit pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. Expand your factories, outposts and pipelines through automation and augmentation. That's it. Get to work and be effective. Warning, planet fall imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. Atmospheric entry in five, four, three, two, one. Planet fall procedure initialized. Going to put on a quick extra minute because the load time was a minute long. <laughs> well, longer, but still. So we have a big ass playground to build Sarge on. Two, a, B, B, your designated sector in the binary star system of Akija. I am Ada, also known as Artificial Directory and Assistant, tasked to support pioneers such as you in their mission. You are the third of your sector to survive planetfall. Congratulations. Note Objective based introduction initialized. Welcome to onboarding. The first um. objective please dismantle the drop pod. The resulting materials will be repurposed to construct a habitat and utility base from now on referred to as the hub. Note Fix It Incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. The dismantle mode, and then the holds to dismantle. 
so you don't actually so we have a window where you can stop accidentally dismantling your entire All operation fix it data and communication is recorded and stored in the codex including these steps okay yeah codex yeah. for people wondering i noticed that the planet's name is a pun second objective Please ensure you have your Fixit Incorporated Xeno Zapper equipped before leaving the drop zone. Note, according to Fixit regulations, every pioneer should have access to a means of defense against extraterrestrial threats. Yeah. Tap for inventory, then we can just double click that. Third objective, please familiarize yourself with the resource scanner to find iron. Note, the acquisition of iron is considered essential in preparation for all future objectives. Yeah, read to scan. More will become available here later. Now it's just iron. There's another pulse. And it'll ping them on the map, on the, yeah, on the compass, where they are. So there's iron 260 meters this way, so that way we head. So the iron the abs, all right. <laughs> yes, that was the pun. Muscles okay. to abs. They, they tried to sneak in their own version of Uranus joke, just... Really? Obvious. I don't know, is it compli What? Really obviously. Yeah, I don't pay for it obviously, and it obviously also rather... Uh, actually, I don't know if you should be tamed or not for... It feel like a massage mm. pun. Uh, he is one of the Xenos <laughs> that inhabit this planet. Okay, these guys oh, love oh, the oh, charge. Oh, 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 it was a tyranid. <laughs> it has a bit of a similar head crest to some. But yeah, just zap yeah. him enough and we can get the some stuff. The of this creature might shed light on how to increase chances of survival. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. And yeah, there'll be research that needs to be unlocked to unlock, well, new stuff. Fourth objective, build the hub. <laughs> Note, to complete this objective, the resources salvaged from the drop pod will be consumed. Caution, ensure the hub is built on spacious open terrain close to the presence of iron sources. Failure to do so will likely result in non-optimal progress. Okay. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Congratulations, you have unlocked Hub Feature Manual Craft Bench Hub Feature Hub Terminal Fifth Objective, Complete Hub Upgrade 1 Note, the Craft Bench and Hub Terminal are essential for progression to the next objective Okay, for that we need to make 10 Iron Rods Which we can make manually here But first we'll need actual iron so, you hold this button down with the mouse. And yeah, the most generic blacksmithing sound ever. Yeah, do, it, it is sort of satisfying to hear. Yeah. There we go, 10 rods. Of course, we typically want to make sure that all of the stuff we make is made automatically, so we don't have to, well, spend the time doing it ourselves. Yeah. And I'm Put in. I'm going to this video company, the... Uh, you know, the fictional company for making the drop pod recyclable. For it kind of makes sense for you to make you have it to do that. For it, yeah, it, despite what the company see, they recycle everything in the future, especially if you do space exploration and such. Recyclable is not gonna be oh, you have just a to a way you say you're gonna do it, but not gonna do it. You're mining. gonna have to Inventory, do it. Yeah. Hub feature, personal storage. And there's Six enough subjective. space junk already out there. Upgrade two. Note, portable miners yeah. require no power and will mine a node until their inventory is full. Note, multiple portable miners can be used on a single node. Uh, yeah, we got a little chest now. Uh, portable miners. Shouldn't those be unlocked already? I'm not seeing them in here. Hmm. But yeah, portable miners are your first step with automation. 
Uh, seriously, where... Was it supposed to give me a few? Because they've been unlocked here. Or is it... No, we, we don't have crafting in our own pants. Hmm. Also, it shows relevant items to stuff that you want to make over there. Um, let's see. Production at the craft pen. No, we, there were, we already have one. Equipment workshop. That is what we need to make those. But for that, we need some more iron and some rods. So let's make some. Okay. Yeah, this, games like this always start off slow. But the point is to ensure that it starts moving faster and faster as you go. So equipment shop. Okay, two more plates. We can mark things for building. Or to want to do, yeah, to a to-do list. So we can keep track of what we have and what we need. Really useful, especially if you're starting to build bigger things, of course. So one equipment yeah. workshop. And there. Portable miner. Let's see. Add to do list. Two iron plates. Three iron rods to be made. Okay, so need to do a few more of these. Two plates. Oh, that was actually four plates, but oh well. And yeah, um, these big things, uh, they're harmless. Yeah, also, like it says in the <clears throat> on the left there, buildings can be dismantled without any loss of resources. Really useful if you're win if you need to redesign someplace or just need to move somewhere else. Because these build these starting bases are not going to last too long, since well you need new resources and you need to go find them first. Okay, one portable miner. There we go. Now we can equip that and just park it right over here. And it just starts digging all on its own. Okay, let's have a little look again here. Uh, 20 of those, 10 of those. Rumbly thing. So yeah, these things are, of course, the slowest to mine. Let's see, 40 per minute. Still decently, that's still faster than we can do. Okay. <clears throat> so that was uh, 20, was it 20 rods and 10 plates or the other way around? I, th I think it was the other way around. Either way, let's just make a bunch of iron with what it has for us. Uh, yeah, like I said, start slow, but stuff like this you can automate pretty quickly, since the automation is half the point. Uh, yeah, 10 plates, 20 rods. We should have almost enough for that. There, uh, just three short, but the miner will have the iron that we need for this. I just remember something. Is it this one of the games you almost got late to streaming on? Uh, uh, because... Uh, perhaps <laughs> I, I have I have lost quite some hours to this game in the past. It has been a bit since I last picked it up again. Yeah, I think I used to remember. I think one of the times when you had that security job, one of the days you've uh, you, you start to play either this one or Factorio, and I started to notice um, you're about to stream. He, he's zooming two meters or something. I started feature by a poking you a few times. Scanner feature. Pop. Yeah. <laughs> New buildings and recipes, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench, respectively. Seven we now have this here. Complete hub upgrade three. Note: Connect buildings to a biomass burner for power. Note: Buildings such as the smelter require a recipe to be set. Advice. Automate the smelting process and use portable miners for optimal results. Okay, now we have the smelter accessible, which, well, is going to be a big part of everything. 
Uh, let's see, we need copper wire and iron bars for that. So I, I do like that this thing gets, the hub gets expanded during this first part as we go. But yeah, for wire, we need copper. So we need to go find copper ore. Uh, that way. Only 200 meters, pretty close, all things considered. And over here we have a limestone deposit, which is also needed later. Though it's used a lot less wait. than the metals. Wait, wait, uh, I need to double check if it's limestone. Need those. This is one of or... multiple edibles Oops. we have detected in your vicinity, which are within approved nutritional and medical categories as established by R&D. A new research tree right. can now be accessed in the MAM. Damn. Are those giant raspberries? Sort of, yeah. There we go. Might as well show this as a perfect time to show these. And yeah, just... Nom straight through your mask to regain health. <laughs> yeah, most of these yep, <laughs> most of these nodes will be defended. They're typically not look heavily. Here. I was it. Think of, look at raspberries. They kind of look like mi many many tiny berries. So when you do <laughs> it like this, a giant one, it actually looks a bit freaky. It's kind of more of it's in a, in a that weird position. It looks, it looks freaky, but also makes sense. Okay, Rob might already have a better spot here. That's closer to the between copper and iron. Also, these are pure. Or no, this is normal now. Just the rock was pure iron. It, yeah, stuff. Purity has an effect on how effective it is to mine something. It's it, pure, oh. giving double, impure, giving half, and normal, well, normal. Uh, and so how we, to get, what happens back. to the bodies? Uh, the bodies of the creatures we kill will just eventually vanish, and I don't think they respawn. And I might have not have a way to get back up. Were you supposed to gather them or something? Uh, we gather remains from them. Uh, the hog remains. They call them hogs. I can see them nicknaming them hogs. Yeah. Hogs. <laughs> Since they do like the charge. And the sound. <laughs> okay, need to get back up. Uh, let's see. We don't have access to floor paneling yet, so we can't really make ramps at the moment. But of course, the moment that you can, it is advised to do that to make shortcuts and, well, not get yourself stuck at the bottom of a cliff. <clears throat> okay. Just need to grab this, which is full at the moment. Turn that into, um, yeah, into iron ingots. Actually, we can make a bunch of these, so we can already make some <clears throat> a smelter to automate this for us. So let's make some wires. Wires are something you are going to always have either too much or not enough of. Okay. Smelter. You mean like most of the things in Valheim? Yep. <laughs> like in most survival always games. No, this game doesn't something. actually have a survival aspect. Okay, we need to set a recipe for it. So since we're next to the iron, might as well set it to iron. Give it a bunch. But it's not going to run, of course. Not without being connected, but for that we need cable, which is made from copper wire. There we go. And then we just click one and two. The wires can go through stuff. And this is now running because the biomass burner is producing, is producing power. <clears throat> Wait, you looted it leads? Yep. Well, you, basically anything with biomass. Though honestly, you want to get, you want to move away from the biomass burners as soon as you can, because yeah, otherwise you'll just have to keep looking around for everything. Let's see, twenty and twenty. We can still make a bunch of those ourselves, but it's a lot so faster to just grab them from here. So it's a mechanical tyranny. 
Okay, we need 20 plates, 20 rods, and then a bunch of cables. Right. Keep that thing fed. I think, I think it is actually crafting a little bit slower than we are, but we can put up multiple smelters, of course. So, more iron plates. Actually, probably best if we do that right away. Need more wire. So, more copper, then wire, and then a second smelter. Though, of course, that's going to draw more power. Hmm. Smelter, iron rods. Okay, more of these. Okay, smelter, there, cable, yep. certain things can only, yeah, most buildings can only have one thing connected to them, and it includes the biomass burner, but there is something that we can equip, or that we can get pretty early on, actually in the next upgrade here, power poles. So, yeah, at the moment we're a bit stuck with just one smelter, but it's still a lot better than having to do it all manually, because that can work whilst we're doing other things. I just realized, what? didn't I say it should be a, your habitat? Yeah, which is what we're currently also working on. Yes, uh, we're all right. expanding this, putting up walls and all of that. <laughs> okay, I was wondering, wait, they said first thing should be is a habitat. But we've been everything else but the habitat so far. <laughs> Okay, we've got the iron, and we've got the rods and the plates. So now we just need the wire. No, actually, no, not wire. Cable. I, I no, oh, that is wire. I'm kind of glad that this, where we are standing on, is not the habitat, but otherwise... <laughs> yeah, I will take it back my compliments to that uh, company. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, and go. New buildings, new parts, and new scannable resources. Congratulations. You have unlocked the scanner feature, limestone. New buildings and recipes, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench, respectively. Eighth objective. Complete hub upgrade four. Note. Use power poles to expand the power network for optimal results. For that, we need some wire, some iron rods, and concrete. So... Let's quickly make a few more of these. And yeah, concrete is made from limestone, and luckily enough, we're right next to the deposit here. It's just for copper that we need to travel a bit. <clears throat> but yeah, that's going to become a big part later on as well, be as you, well, either set up tiny factories all over the place next to uh, the act where they're actually, the where the resources for them are actually found. Or you have everything moved to one big freaking central factory where everything gets processed instead. Alright, uh, uh, just uh, double check this is limestone. Uh, yeah, tastes like lime. <laughs> Definitely limestone. Okay, uh, iron rods. Okay, you can say, why is limestone called limestone? <laughs> I can actually tell it's like my yoga, it tastes like lime. <laughs> I very much doubt so as well. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> A bit early. Uh, um, uh, there and there. Um, he, you know, you do know the date today is, right? <laughs> yeah, it's December. Okay. So yeah, so yeah. it's not too early. <laughs> okay. And yeah, these power poles can have up to four connections at once. And let's see. You're out. Oh, good. Yep. Actually, I'll set you to iron as well, since we have almost no copper. Okay. Let's grab that. And there. Okay. And yeah, so slowly but surely you can build out and get everything that you need. Let's see, 75, 20, and 10. So, actually, let's make some extra, hmm, let's make some extra drills. 
At least one for the copper and one for the limestone. So... Uh, I've forgotten how many of each we need for that, but I think this should be enough. But yeah, production. You always want to have your production up high as much as you can. So you don't have to you know, wait on a slow drip of uh, stuff getting fed to you. So. Okay, let's plonk that down. Okay, uh, actually... Okay, it does start digging even before it's finished. So I'll just grab a few more. And yeah, all of this will become easier as you unlock things and research things, because not everything is unlocked through these upgrades. Some things you need to do sp through specific research. Okay, let's make some more of this. Uh, actually, no, I want to... How does it look inside your habitat? Yeah, give me a sec. You can put stuff towards this early on. If you fill in. And yeah, here it is. Bunk beds, lockers, a fridge actually here, and a little cooking area. And that's the timer going off. And over here we have a computer. That is not fully functional at the moment, it seems. <laughs> and the timer went off. But yeah. Uh, this game does have lore, though it doesn't have a full-on story. So it wouldn't be for our normal streaming, but I would definitely be up for streaming this with others, just to see what kind of shenanigans we can get up to with building and getting in each other's way. <laughs> It'd be interesting to cool commentate the home. And I think I could actually put the graphics up higher. Not, sh not sure at all why it was slowing me down Pardon. In the in the main menu, could be just oh, yeah. a poorly optimized main menu. Like, yeah, I'm it is still early Wonders. access. Yeah, I could for Asia Wonders Four to work very well on my PC, but for some reason, whenever I do a create faction in Asia Wonders Four, I can hear my graphic card work really hard. Yeah. Okay, and our next game is Saviors. So, let's just move to new game, story mode. Yes, continue anyways. Let's... Mm, let's pick up easy. And, easy yeah. Easy for show, guys. <laughs> okay, the, these faces, oh. come on. Wait, wait, wait. I may have to say. The bold one is actually the one that looks... The best. More realistic compared to the others, for the other, others to look like they are from some claymation uh, thing. Yeah, you know, badly made Marvel claymation. Like it was a show. <laughs> okay, I forgot to read out it. Oh, come on. Oh, well, I think we found the first one so far. Yeah, let's see. Uh, all right, Ace is the moment you've been waiting for, the real deal. Uh, oh, come on, it's, uh, no, it's over. Oh. Here. Uh, don't tell me what to do, old man. Just you're lucky you're such a good pilot. Uh, okay, there we go. Now, as far as I know, there has been an electric surge in the city. It seems like there's no electricity and the city is dark as pitch. There's also been reports of several explosions, so it may... You know, <clears throat> so it seems like some kind of an attack. Uh, yeah, oh, come on, we can't move this on our own so far. We have to put it to auto scroll and then click back. Okay, that's the, that's already a point against the game. Uh, if my fears are correct, this could be the moment I've been waiting for, and the reason why I created Project Saviors. I wish we had more time to prepare, but it seems like the time is now. Be careful and report back with anything you can find out about the incidents. Are you still talking, old man? It's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know. I've been ready since the day I was born. Arrogance. I'm starting to regret this already, so am I. For <laughs> Head over to the city and see what you can find out. Just be careful and try to bring my ship back in one piece. Don't forget to use your rockets when necessary. They can make the difference between life and death when the situation gets tough. And we'll talk again when you get back. Okay, so someone was obviously experimenting with uh, their first 3D project or so. Yeah. 
I, as I said, what is all one we are using might be the one best looking. As quickly started moving his mouth, it looked a bit weird. Yeah. Okay, how do we even attack? Uh, oh, uh, I'm having so much Amiga feed from this. Okay, the controls are this on this are are the arrow keys and Z and X to attack. Okay, that that's all. That just feels like bad porting. Thank you. Music is decent at least. Oh yeah. And yeah, as is very obvious. It's an old school style top down shooter, though we actually have health instead of being instant killed on hits. Uh, okay. it's more... Oh, brother. Oh, brother. What is that game called? Insectoids or something? Uh, what? Are you talking uh, about an old oh. game or so? Yeah, the old game that spawned this kind of top over plane shooting all the planes, UFOs, and all that. <laughs> now that you mention that, I don't think I ever heard about where this genre originated from. I have, and it, it was used to be a common name that everyone refers to, like, oh, it's like that game, and I like that game. I just realized I haven't heard that game in a few years now. Has that name finally died out? I think it was insectoids or something. The closest thing I can think of would be asteroids, but that's a completely different kind because that's where you're moving around on your own and instead of a linear path like this. Okay. Uh, in a bit of a, this game's defense, I think it is actually free on Steam, so... Yeah, the, oh. <laughs> this is someone's... Uh, own project or something, I think. At least the gameplay looks to be... <laughs> looks to be reasonable. And then again, I'm far from a connoisseur of uh, this kind of game. But uh, yeah, I, I think we can... Uh, I think we can easily say this one goes into the no pile. Yeah. Big no. I'm surprised it even has a story. So it's not impossible, but they are rather... Like, even if it's a good story, it has... Those games have one major problem. Yeah, they, they get rather monotonous. That too, and it's a very much trial and error. Yeah. <clears throat> like, so you yeah. can get good. But it takes a while. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, moving on to something a lot, a lot more known, Scribble Knots. Oh no. Okay. Uh, oh, no music here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Reset level. Uh, yep. Or actually, delete all data. Okay. There's no new game button. It seems. So yeah. Starting the timer. Our story Allow that. With Grandpa Edgar and Grandma Julie. You might not believe this, but Grandpa Edgar used to be the world's greatest adventurer. Grandma Julie would beg to differ. She was also an adventurer. Edgar would often brush away vines or open doors thought to be undisturbed for generations, only to find Julie was already there having lunch. They competed like this on adventure after adventure. On one adventure, Julie beat Edgar to the top of a long lost pyramid. But the treasure she found was an engagement ring. The two of them semi-retired to start a family and they continued starting that family until they had 42 children. Uh... One day, Mom and Dad gave Maxwell and me two amazing gifts. The first was a magic globe that let you travel anywhere in the world. The second was the most amazing notebook. This notebook let you write any word in it, and poof, the word would come to life.
parents were worried about us turning out to be spoiled little brats. So they sent us out to face the challenges of the outside world. On the road to the city, we ran into an old man who said he was hungry. Maxwell made something to give him, but he played a nasty trick. The apple was rotten. Oh, the old man spat it out as soon as he tasted it and was very, very angry. As he cast some sort of magic, he called us spoiled little kids and then disappeared. It didn't seem like anything had happened. But when Maxwell turned to continue down the road, I couldn't follow him. The old man had put a curse on me that was turning me to stone. We didn't know what to do. Luckily, our brother Edwin's farm was nearby. Boy, you should have seen how angry Edwin was. He couldn't believe what we did to the old man and said we probably deserved what we got. Lucky for us, Edwin knew about starites. Starites are magical objects born out of the happiness of others. If you do enough things to make others happy, you will find starite. Hopefully, if Maxwell used the notebook's power for good, he could collect enough starite to remove the curse. Maxwell said, that's it. I'm gonna go out and do good things for all the people I can find. I'm gonna get all the starites in the world and I'm gonna make you better, Lily. So Maxwell grabbed his notebook and headed for the door. Okay, those two are were definitely uh, prolific. <laughs> 40 kids. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, the prank was mean, but cursing the one innocent yeah. of the crime with stone curse? Okay, that, that's... Um, yeah. I don't like disciplining and all that. Though, if you need to show some punishment, just don't have a punishment that is an overkill. Like, uh, how to say this? Disproportionate uh, retribution or something like that? Disproportionate punishment? Yeah, <laughs> I just need to figure out a good uh, uh, metaphor. Like, Okay, like, like example, Hillian steals an apple. The, he, he, just a scolding to not do that is just fine. But it would be unfair that he steals an apple and get 10 years in jail for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, this is the, the kind of feel feel here, like... Just... He gave a rotten apple to eat, just... Well... Put the apple on him or something, he smeared it on his face, maybe. Or school it, but don't put a curse for it. And yeah, this game, it is a bit rough looking on some bits. You, got, you can see some lines in characters, but I'm pretty sure that's because this is a uh, an updated port from uh, the DS and such. I think that is where this Fribonauts game started. And yeah, this whole game is about creating stuff, changing stuff, and... Uh, Trying to get this through the end, uh, trying to fix things. Is this a things. sequel? Not sure. <clears throat> well, I feel like this is not the game I saw Jack Septicai play long ago. <laughs> Let's see, hints are unlocked over time. Click on the associate. Uh, th this game was mostly meant for... Uh, <clears throat> uh, mostly meant for, for, for a wide audience, I'll say. Not just for kids or so. But for everyone oh, to be able to use it, no matter the age, basically. Let's see. Magic backpack stores object for later. Throw the wings in the backpack and wait for the judges to arrive. Okay. Over there. Wait for all ages, he says. At near all ages. Any age that can read. And write. Okay. And there we go. When pigs fly. Blah, 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 bl
Oh, come on. <laughs> but th this game takes absolutely nothing serious, I'd say. And yeah, there we have Star Right for us to collect. And we just need to get as much as we can to uh, <laughs> prevent our sister from turning into a Medusa victim. Uh, wait, what? Turn to stone. Yeah, but... <laughs> Don't get cursed by the old man as well now. <laughs> Let's see. Click golden objects for hints. Help the sprout grow. Okay, turn that off. Uh, let's see. Watering can. And yeah, this the library of words for the <clears throat> that this game can uh, actually make you use, or that you can actually use, is quite uh, impressive. Uh, Though, of course, there are certain words that you can't uh, do and such. Um. Okay, the plants get away the other shard opportunity. Reset the level to uh, return all objects to their original state. While keeping your earned shards, so you don't have to redo things over. So, resets. And plus, this, this gives you the chance to just screw around. Because you can just cause absolute mayhem as well with this okay. game. Oh, wait, wait. <clears throat> Oh, here it is. Yes. Vulgarity, copyrighted materials, and proper nouns are not uh, uh, are not allowed. <laughs> wait, okay. What? Wait, wait. Okay. I feel like proper nouns. What? Do, what do I mean with that? Mm, not too sure. Uh, for now, though. Yeah. <laughs> Get the cat out of the tree. <laughs> the easy way. <laughs> Kitty, come home. Proper. Oh, but I think I know what they mean. Uh, or improper nouns, maybe? Uh, for example, what do you call a female dog? Oh, that. <laughs> for the, how many correct terms mm -hmm. that are also mm -hmm. used for vulgarity, so yeah. to speak? If I understand this right. Let's see. Click maximum and select pick avatar to place any unlocked brother. Let's see, that's just redoing the tutorial. Uh, pick avatar. Uh, let's see. Okay, we can change to Edwin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maxwell in disguise, change your avatar. <laughs> and we can travel to new places with the bus stop. Uh, up there, click that. Capital City, go. <clears throat> Oh gosh, I guess that also means that you cannot, if you want to write a specific species of bird, you cannot write teeth. Yeah, it, it's probably a lot more just a generic, like just birds. Let, let's actually try that. So type a word and touch the blue uh, button to see similar objects. Okay. Uh... Yeah, it, still, it still looks weird to say uh, no proper pronoun. Like, it sounds weird. Yeah, I, I think we might have misread it. It, yeah, maybe we misread it or misunderstanding it. Uh, okay, we. The heck did I accidentally do? Uh, let's go into that. Uh, uh, what did? Okay, I, acc did I accidentally uh, completed one of the things, but what the heck was that? Uh, why did it just pop a parade out of nowhere? Uh, <clears throat> But yeah, th this game is just uh, a funny little puzzle with a lot of opportunities and the heck are you. Let's see. Uh, play someone into the phone booth to make a sidekick for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I know someone to put in there. Yep. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know at least one of these you can do. Yep. Get in there, God. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, not. You're not satisfied with God as your sidekick, really? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> that's the issue. <laughs> okay, get out, you, and we'll just do a. Uh, James, get in. 
<laughs> Look, apparently God is still <laughs> is below him for a uh, it's a burp. <laughs> Uh, th this game is just so fucking wacky as such. So uh, it does me it's... wonder. Actually, when I think about it, it's probably for the best that this game is not moddable. Yeah, that probably is a way to get it, or it already is. A... But yeah, a lot of people would probably put in stuff that would be non-suitable for it and all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I, I think we sort of get the feeling for it. Uh, let's see, I'm parked illegally. Uh, let's see. But th this game is all about trying to solve uh, stuff creatively, and there's just many, many ways that you can uh, solve things with. Uh, Okay, I was trying to move... I was trying to push this thing away. Can we just... If we can clean but it. Do you want a, something else to move that, like a... Oh, what are they called? Those things that you... To away? To... Oh, it was a tool truck. Oh, <laughs> the big car is behind the wheel. Uh, get out of there, you. <laughs> okay, how do we connect this thing to that? They or... said it, but... Uh, it said connect the... Oh, there we go. Okay. And out of the way. Uh, 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 did uh, she uh, just... <laughs> apparently oh. God just got a fine. I think she just threw it at... Okay. Yeah, the, the, the characters have basic AI that can cause all sorts of shenanigans between them. Okay, uh, welcome to the Virgil Gallery. Counterfeit artifacts. Okay. Yep, yeah, yeah. penguin. Yeah, I think, I think we, we, we get this. I doubt we will stream this. Yeah. Uh, uh, finicky patrons. Uh, okay, what did I just start? Uh, let's see, it's opening day at the museum. Play something in the frames that will be sure to please the museum's patrons. Uh, yep. <laughs> but, yeah, this, this is a good game. A funny little game, but again, not really our style. So... Let's call it a bit early on that one <clears throat> and move on to the next. Again, not a bad game, just bad for our style of streaming or our target with streaming. Yeah. And I don't think it's a uh, uh, cloud error with scribble knots, apparently. And yes, I, I turned on that little uh, corner catcher for stream uh, for yeah, achievements back on. <clears throat> just to catch stuff like that, or if achievement do get put down there and... It, okay, this game is called C, uh, C Feud. And as you can see at the... Well, if you could see if the game was not moved down like that. Okay. Uh, give me a second to try and reposition this thing. Uh, let's see. C, of course, it's been re unselected here again. Or doesn't recognize it anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah, this game is only really in here because of, well, <laughs> me not throwing out as many things anymore for the showcase, even if it is very unlikely to, well, just not going to happen at all. That it would get streamed yeah. eventually or not. Yeah, do yeah. we have found some uh, on the second round to be surprisingly good for streaming? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, th this game was made by a bunch of students, I believe, and it is free, so that's also a point to it, and uh, apparently it's broken now. Oh, there we go. Okay. And... Uh, get short outside yeah. the street. <laughs> okay, give it a moment to load. We'll probably be done with this... Oh, come on! 
Again, student work. Uh, okay, I might need to change it to a gameplay capture at this point. And yeah, it's it's basically an underwater Mario Kart. Oh. Okay. Instant no. Okay, just at least I want to showcase it somewhat, and apparently it's running terribly as well. It's 30 frames a second at the moment. Let me at least change one of these so that we can actually see what happens in this. Um, move that away yeah, a bit so we can actually see it this. It is now trying to throw you as much as possible to tell you don't showcase me or something. <laughs> Uh, let's see, just gotta turn this off for a second. There we go. Okay. And yeah, it, <laughs> it's a free little uh, Mario Kart clone. It isn't terrible from what I've seen of it. But do gotta keep in mind that it's a student work. And well, they, at least they made it free. So <laughs> you're not losing anything with like, trying to play this game. So uh, in that aspect, it's at least something you could pick up with a bunch of friends to just have a, a laugh with as you try and race each other. But yeah, not not for our style of streaming. New little tornadoes. Uh, yeah, the an animation looks nice, but again, the whole racing part thing. Yeah, an instant nope for me. Let's see. Okay, it seems that we get the upgrades immediately upon moving over those instead of having it do a little roulette. And it's... Okay, OBS is not liking the game as much because it's running a lot slower there than it's on my end. One of the reasons why I've moved, moved mostly to... Uh, Move mostly to display captures instead of gameplay uh, game capture. I can say this that Disco doesn't like it either. Yeah. Okay, let's at least finish this race and then we'll call it on this. Like I said, a free little uh, shenanigannery game if you have some friends to waste some time with. But beyond that, uh, nothing special. If you have Mario Par uh, if you have Mario Kart, go play Mario Kart. How about yeah, don't actually... value your friendships? <laughs> what friendships? Uh, okay. Well, yeah, competently made, free little thing. Okay. And as soon as this is done loading. Okay, we can't access the menus while it's doing the countdowns like this. Okay. Definitely could use more work, but it's, at least it's a decent start for a bunch of new folk. So, there and there. Okay, let me turn that back on. And we can move on to Seasons After Fall. Which is a game that looks really interesting to me. But we'll have to see how it plays. <clears throat> and if we go full time, if we go the full length of the timer for this, it'll be the last game we showcase. Let's see, very obviously French. Swing, swing, submarine. Okay. Let's move right in. Yeah, we took a moment to realize it there. And let's start a timer. Hmm. Points for the presentation already. Yeah. It's a little bit crude, but I think it's more stylistically meant to be crude looking. 
Like everything is hand drawn. Or nearly everything at least. Maybe not so much drawn, but more painted, perhaps? It looks nice all the same. Not trying to criticize it here. It's very nice. Reminds me somewhat of Ori, if it had you know, Ori had a bit of a cruder style. You mean more like hand-painted style? <laughs> okay, uh, boing, roots. Boing. Okay. Uh, I'm only guessing that we have to bounce into these things at the moment. Not sure if that's doing us any good or any bad, except for killing the lights, that is. Uh, let, let's just... Let's just not waste time popping every one of them. I'm pretty sure that's not the point. Hmm. E. Current. Okay, the other heck is going on with all of this. Need another current. Hmm. Uh, do we go against the flow? That root doesn't have a flower, so it doesn't respond. Uh, these roots go pretty deep. Hmm. Uh, hello. Dom. An awakening. What's on the surface? Hmm. Definitely curious at the absolute least, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> Wish just gets farted out. Hello. It took a long time to wake up, little seed. If the guardians were here, they'd give you serious reprimand. If you sleep too much, one day you'll lose yourself in your dreams and never wake up again. Yeah, that's exactly what the Guardians would say. But, luckily for you, I'm here to greet you today. And I'm much younger than them, so I won't lecture you. <laughs> Wasn't expecting voice acting in here. guest has arrived earlier than expected. Let's see who it is. Little Seed, in honor of this special day, may I introduce... Your present! Oh, a wild fox. Ugh, it's better than nothing, I suppose. I would have preferred a smarter and better looking animal. A wolf, maybe. But Still, foxes you know are what? pretty smart. It doesn't matter. We'll make do with this one. Or at the very least, clever. Okay. Okay, can I use. They can okay, be I... very adorable. I can use WASD. If it... Don't be afraid. If it was just arrow keys, I would have deducted a bit of a point on that, since hey, well. Not too close. You'll frighten him. Let him come to you. Since the, the days of arrow key controls in modern games is quite over. Okay. Uh, I can't move upwards. Fox needs to come to us. Uh, how do we? 
Oh wait. That's it. Now entice him to the center of the sanctuary. Okay, gotta lure him over. That's it. Into the center. Just a little further. This fox is really slow. <laughs> Come on, we're not going to eat you. Perfect. Stay there, little seed. Place. Leave the rest to me. And now we are the fox. And hey, presto. Now you have a body, you'll be able to visit the Guardians of the Seasons. I have no choice. I must stay here. So, where do I start? Hmm. Oh, I know. If you follow this path to the east and travel beyond the tall grass, you'll come to the edge of the woods. This is the domain of the Guardian of Winter. It has something I need, and you alone can get it for me. You'll realize what it is when you see it. But I won't give the surprise away. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> hmm. I guess we know what the fox says now. <laughs> Nothing because they're mute. Uh, it's more of. Oh right, my mic doesn't want to pick that sound properly up or something. Off you oh, go, oh. little seed. You. Run, jump, enjoy your new body. You won't ever get lost. I'll always be watching over you. The heck is that? Is there a dryad or something? Maybe, of sorts. A nature spirit, yes. What type? Nuclear. We'll have to see. <laughs> okay, I, I get the feeling I might have been closer with the Ori comparison than I thought. Depending on how much this may turn out to be a platformer. <laughs> now, we're, now we actually bark down. Do we have a body? Or in this case, yeah. I, I don't think it's called bark. <laughs> I think it's called a yelp or yip. I forgot. <laughs> You okay? Those things can launch us, and these will unfurl. Okay. Yeah, this game is definitely going to be a platformer of some kind. I'm liking the music. Oh yeah. This might be the first one today that might be properly leaning yes. Ancestors? You see these totems oh. along the path? They were sculpted by the Guardian of Winter. Interesting, aren't they? But it they look like they have spirits in them. Cause. Don't say too much about them when you see the Guardian. It might get upset. Okay. There's definitely some sort of spirits in those totems. The Guardian loves sleeping yeah. amongst the totems. Follow them. They'll lead you to its lair. Another one of those. All right, we were to say we were to maybe stream. Uh, what was it the first game we streamed today called again? <laughs> Sang Freud's Tales of Werewolves. Sang Freud. Yeah, that one is a yes, maybe yes. This one. Mm. Also, maybe yes. We, we, again, it's probably wise for us to do some minor investigation. Yeah, but it we're saying for it at least it's heavily leaning towards it. And those green jellyfish apparently echo us when we bark and can trigger things for us. And hello, big ass stone wrapped in roots, I'm hoping. Hmm. Let's see. Yep, you're headed up. Okay, probably a good idea to follow that. As much as we can, at least. Uh, can't go up that way. Now, I get the feeling this game is going to be Metroidvania. Uh, unlocking new abilities as we go. 
Another one of those shroom platforms. There's some sort of mystic glow with them. Hmm. That doesn't respond. Let's see. I, th I think we might have gone off course already since there's no totems around. Hmm. Were they by the stone, perhaps? Hmm. Also, what jellyfish? These things. They echo our cry and move up. Oh, here we go with the totems again. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Sneeze or... Oh. Apparently no sneeze. I thought it was about to sneeze. But, um, hello? But it is a bear. And right back to sleep. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I had to say, on some angles, he actually looked like an owl bear more than a bear. I was that thing. People typically presume that hibernation means that they just sleep for the I entire time. Way back, little seed, with a fragment of winter. I think it's trying to communicate with you. But it's well, actually more like a. Bark twice if it's a bit deaf. It's actually more that uh, the entire body goes into low power modes to the point where if they would go any lower, they it they'd probably die. Yeah. So yeah, it's but not also... just sleeping. Yeah, but also there's a reason. There's a saying: "Don't disturb a hibernating bear." Okay, and I think I see what the gimmick of this game is going to be. We can swap between the seasons. Okay. Mm. Mm. I think this thing is going to try to eat you. Let's see. This bit there. Bip. Oh, it spits out snowballs. Okay, so we have to time this, or does it? Oh, no, oh, it it left a big ass pile of snow there. <laughs> that also snow works. No, 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 no. Those are snow boulders. <laughs> okay, so basically a. Well, a, a different perspective uh, oracle of seasons this could get interesting okay and now we need to go back to the other season yep two clicks to change then these become active and on we go okay yeah park twice to change seasons uh, what do you do nothing anymore now Okay. Yeah, th this could definitely be interesting, depending on if. Yeah. You're quicker than I thought. Just goes to show you can't judge a book by its cover. Yep. The fragment is heading towards the sanctuary. Don't let it out of your sight. Yep. Oh, oh, it wraps around there. Uh, okay. And of course, I miss. There we go. And then we just plant pits out snow. And we can move on. Hmm. Let's see. 
I was, I was honestly expecting that the Guardian of Winter would start talking to us as well, but I'm presuming that our narrator is going to be the uh, well, main speaker in all of this. Possibly. I, I was almost... I was unsure there will be a boss fight or not. Hmm. Dude, I, you don't even know there will be uh, combat at all in this. Is this fine? Like, all games don't need combat. Yeah. Sometimes just exploring can be more than enough. Oop. Indeed. Winter fresco. Okay. Okay. What's this about? A figure. Uh, can't make much out around it. Is that a figure? I don't know if the Guardian of Winter told you anything. Hmm. You have to excuse it. It's always very tired. And between you and me, a tad grouchy, too. <laughs> the Guardian is so bad tempered that even the animals don't venture into this forest. Okay, that explains why there's no other animals that we've run across, only uh, flora. No the fauna. Guardians may appear wise, but basically, they're very old. <laughs> so old that they tend to talk rubbish. But luckily, they're here to protect the fragments. They just have to learn how to let go of them. Uh, yeah, age does not always mean wisdom or intelligence. Can we get underneath it as we... Yeah, no, it's on the background. We're on the foreground. Ooh. <laughs> okay, and now we need to switch seasons so that bounce, pa bounce thing... We, well, we'll actually bounce us. If, if I don't rush it too much. Okay. This again, of course, the snow melts in the other seasons. And this could get really interesting. There. Yeah. And I like that it isn't just... With these roots, it isn't just uh, that they light on and off or something, but it actually... As per, you actually see it travel to and fro through the roots. Okay, now that is rejuvenated. And boing. Okay. And back to the sanctuary. Uh, anyways, I was going to make an example. Uh, Okay, that can't be any good. Or is that just locking off an area we don't need to be in it anymore? Look, little sea. The fragment's already in place. It's waiting for you. Move into the center. Go on. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> uh, the example I was going to make is a bit of a dark one. But uh, with the Royal Dutch uh, Air Navy, or at least commercial Air Navy, I've, I don't know how to... I'm blanking out at the moment on how to properly translate it. Uh, KLM. Uh, yeah, I'm, bl I'm blanking on the middle letter at the moment. But yeah, uh, at one point there was a crash that involved the most senior pilot of the company, or one of the most senior uh, pilots, and yeah, it was completely due to pilot error because as it turned out, the guy might have been doing the job for decades, but he was still only as skilled as, uh, well, the average uh, low. <laughs> he was basically not really that good as a pilot, he was just a veteran at it. As in, he managed to not crash up until that time. Oh. So, and yeah. Also, Air Navy? Yeah, I was trying to think of on the spot how to translate. Still, thank you for the mental image. The Dutch Air Navy. Ships flying with balloons. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to separate you oh. from the fox. No, the fox is not going to be happy. Violently ...during the merge process. I'll be as careful as I can, but it's still a tricky procedure. Also, merge process what? It'll be best for the fox to get out of the way.
Yeah. It's been so long since we've seen snow here. Now it's winter for good. No way, I thought you skedaddled. Here's someone who sure hates ceremonies. <laughs> you should possess the fox again before he escapes. Yeah, the fox just doesn't get a say in this. <laughs> okay. Uh, where? Uh, there you are. Get over here, yippee. Listen, little seed. There are four seasons, four guardians. If you merge with the other seasons, you can invoke them at any time. But to do that, we need the fragments. The second guardian lives in a swamp further to the west. I should warn you, this one doesn't like visitors. So keep nice and quiet. So yeah, are, are, it's that uh, way. Straight ahead. are we restoring the balance of nature in this area or so? I think might also, be we a, can't... Yeah, I think you might be right. For seasonal cycles, it's kind of needed for the nature to feel well. Yeah. A certain thing can only. I envy you. I too would like to run, feel the wind on my face, and the ice under my paws. But I can't. Not until we found all the fragments. We must have them to perform the ritual. Are you stuck in that that big ass tree or something? And so why exactly are you stuck? The ritual of the seasons. That's what the Guardians call it. I don't know what it entails exactly, but I've often heard the Guardians talk about it. The ritual of the seasons can change the course of a life. If that's true, it means my life can be transformed, and yours too. I could leave the sanctuary at last, and you could... I don't know. Take your place? Your dreams could come true. You must have some. Dreams. Okay, I'm getting a little bit suspicious of uh, this. Uh, let's just call, call her a dryad for now. Since we don't actually see what she is. Oh, hello. Okay, are you going to... All right, so that will be dangerous. Is again, I'm fine with it. Uh, speaking of... Uh, what was that? I think that might have been Kuro's cousin. You mean it <laughs> might be an owl? Yeah, I think it was a bird or maybe a snake. It wasn't a big view that we got of it. Yeah, for what I saw, it could be either be a bird, a snake, a frog. What the heck? For all we know. It could be a hamster. <laughs> or a guinea pig in a pig contest. Or a giant miniature space hamster. And I just hope it's not a hamster, for this is rumors where I don't right. want to be right. You're about to enter the territory of the Guardian of the Fall. It can be unpredictable. Watch out, it doesn't harm you and your fox. Uh, that could actually be the f that's the actual freaking guardian perhaps okay well, uh, that much i figured out and it was the guardian okay i'm yeah, definitely curious now uh how do we con well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't uh, really matter too much how we proceed because the timer just went off yeah i feel like i want to say yes but investigation first like how you know, long how it is long. and all that. I don't think it's too long. Seven uh, percent. Yeah, that, that, that game is definitely going to take a bit. Also, I like this. Wait, 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 wait. Seven percent in half an hour. That's not too bad. Yeah, it could be just complete. It could be story progression. It could be complete uh, one hundred percent. Find everything progression. Yeah, for. Okay, I gotta take a guess. For if it is, it's like twenty percent for two hours. That's doable. <laughs> okay. Now before we go 
Uh, before we go look for someone to raid, uh, Sankfroids, I would say yes as a side quest. Same, even though I f do feel like the cutscenes dialogue is rather jarring. <laughs> then we have Satisfactory, no for our typical style, but maybe for multiplayer, just shenanigans or chilling. Yeah. Save yours is a no. <laughs> Scribonauts, uh, again, a, a good little game, but not our type. Sea Feuds is also a no. And Seasons After Fall, I'm leading hard towards a yes at the moment. Yeah, so we might have two yes for story streams. This is, well, the main streams we do, story. <laughs> yeah, so these two are going to join the big-ass pile of other shortcuts that I have on my desk. <laughs> it's for uh, games to... Yeah, potentially do a side quest soon enough. But for now, uh, on that actually, continuing from yesterday, I do. I, I looked up how to get the good ending for Nefarious, and it is pretty simple. Uh, probably simple enough that uh, we can. <laughs> we'll have to get a filler game after it. Uh, so yeah, we'll be nice. we'll be redo we'll be continuing with Nefarious for a little bit, and then. Well, we'll see what we pick up for afterwards. <clears throat> Next yeah, week, that is. Uh, I he told me what it is. I'm kind of happy it's that alternative word. I was thinking if it's crown, it's so easy. Then when I went to bed, I realized, oh, finding all the crowns may not be as easy. For those things are usually tricky. Yeah, it's not the it's not the crowns. It's all of the side quests. The thing is. To get May Apple side quests, you need to uh, find a little hidden area in Faraday's level. And actually, it's yeah. I, I think most people would probably already find find it on their own because you just have to fall down the first pit. Something we probably avoided due to, or do you avoid it due to? Well, yeah, <laughs> it being typically death. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For now, though, let's head on over here. And before we end the stream, we're going to look for someone to raid. So let me close the preview and move the browser forward so I'm not looking over my neck the whole time with this. Okay. Screen share, Twitch, live. Now, let's have a look. We have Dr. Misunderstood with Resident Evil Village. Ruffy Raccoon is playing Rocksmith 2014 Edition, remastered. And 3 Jack is playing Jackbox. <coughs> He's playing Jackbox games, but we rated, we rated them yesterday. Yeah, and I don't feel like it's good to raid people doing Jackbox for... Yeah, it's not really easy to go and thank people in the middle of a Jackbox. Yeah. Then we have Jackson Sam, who is playing Monstro Nomi, which looks like some sort of Pokemon-ish game from the preview, because of course that's a freaking ad. Uh, then we have Isaiah Razier who is playing Psychonauts 2. Moonrise is also playing Jackbox. Wait, are they are they in 3 Jack maybe playing the same game or in the same one? Uh, let me do a quick check. Or are they just uh, by accident? Uh, oh, <laughs> apparently 3 Jack just stopped. Uh, Moonrise. Okay, they are not playing in this. They're, they're just playing J J Jackbox as well, it seems. Uh, next, uh, Hisaya with Psychonauts 2. Then we have Kiri Natsuyoko with Dynasty Warriors 8 again. Ridian is online with Marvel Spider Man 2. And last but not least, we have uh, Horatius the Dwarf with, yeah, with Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. Oh, oh, and, and Grim the Wolf is now online with Lethal Company and Redacted Cat with StarCraft 2. Okay. Any spark your interest or shall I take a pick? I will let you take a pick. Uh, okay. Yes, I've been letting him take a pick for a lot recently, but sometimes it's hard to pick. Okay. Uh, let's go raid Jackson Sam then, just because I'm curious about this Pokemon-ish uh, game. It is very, very, very Pokemon-like. <laughs> okay. 
So copy name, head to our place, and then slash raid and paste. But before we go, of course, let me first check for any lurkers. Uh, none at the moment. Oh, well. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching Now or Later. And thank you, as always, for here. You're welcome as always, my friend. And thank you all for joining. And yeah, if nothing gets in the way, then later today we'll have another stream. Maybe LA Noir. And if not, if Rom isn't uh, able to join, then uh, we can continue with Jurassic World Evolution 2. That sounds good to me. Yeah, finish up the career slash tutorial. And then uh, maybe Sandbox, or maybe we go do some of the Chaos Theory stuff. But for yeah, now. Like... Hmm? It might be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, that's for now. Let's get that raid started. Uh, no block, okay. And yeah, thank you all again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe for the one, and watch out for undead seagulls. <laughs> and the grumpy uh, seasoned guardians. <laughs>